Rhineognatha, considered to be one of the oldest insects known, it lived 35 million years ago. This creature is the winner of the recent creature submissions, where we had lots and lots of different community votes on which new dinosaurs we wanted to add to the game. This creature was in first, and it was followed up by the Hatsiogotorex, and in third was the Pantheria Aatrox, which is a cave lion. So those were the top three, and this one won out of all of them. And I'm not surprised if I'm honest. In Ark, this creature is said to be the Giga of the Skies and Seas. Is similar to a reaper and the Tuso. In the real world you can much compare this creature to the likes of a wasp as I've read through its dossier and it very much seems like one of them when it comes to breeding and just initial going around and being a pain. <laughs> it's pretty much what it's gonna be. But let's get into the nitty gritty and I'm gonna tell you all about this creature and what you can expect when it comes into the game because it will be coming much later in this year in 2023. In Ark, this creature has a whole range of dangerous and fascinating abilities. It's set to be one of the newest apex predators. Especially dangerous because it not only can reside in the skies, it also travels beneath the waves with ease, making it the first apex predator of its kind, which can traverse both biomes, whereas a normal apex predator of the biomes would be restricted to either the land or sea, this one can go between the two. Rhinios are very dangerous to the unbeknowing prey. Not only does it have high speeds to propel itself through the water, but it can also do great in the skies as well, not losing any momentum when traveling between the two biomes. Its six legs make it great at dismounting riders from their tames. Once in the claws of one of these insects, it can easily shred its prey. If you are to domesticate a rhino though, these extra appendages can be a good thing. Much like the Karkinos, it can pick up two medium-sized creatures either side of it using its legs. And when flying or swimming, it can use all six of its legs, and it can even pick up larger creatures. It has been seen grabbing larger-sized creatures such as the Plesiosaurus or Rex with ease. As you can imagine, this also makes the creature a great hauling companion. Not as good as a Quetzal though, but it sure can carry a lot. This is extremely useful as the Rhino's head and extra legs make it really good at gathering meat, hide, wood, charcoal, and organic polymer. Rhinoganthra have very distinct wing patterns called owl's eyes, inspired by the Caligo butterfly species that resembles an owl face when the wings are fully spread. Normal day butterflies have eyes or spots on their wings, usually to fool or ward off predators. Rhinoconotha is no different. It uses these eye spots to ward off sea predators as it highly resembles the Tuthutusius's eyes. When underwater, the Rhinio mimics a Tuso, in fact. They use their wings to resemble the head of a Tuso and their legs as the tentacles. These wing spots are not only used for camouflage, though, they can instill fear into the Rhinio's prey. Rhinios can use an ability called Mimicry, where the Rhinio opens and shakes their wings vigorously, roaring to resemble a giant head. This stuns creatures briefly for about five seconds, giving the Rhinios either a chance to run away, or, much more likely of the species, it will use it as a head start to attacking and grabbing its prey. When it comes to being attacked by a wild or domesticated rhino, you have a right to be fearful. The creature is very aggressive and a proficient killer. It bites and has a nasty bleed effect, which inflicts a lot of damage. It is a fast attacker and it can also not only use its jaws, but it can also use a leg attack to push several enemies back at a time. It is a much weaker attack though than its bite, but still is quite a nasty one if all the same. Thankfully, one of your only saving graces when coming up against one of these things is it's much like a mantis, which means it's very much a glass cannon. It is also extremely volatile to fire damage, making a flamethrower or a fire wyvern an ideal defense choice. Tamed magmasaurs are also a great choice due to the saddle being a cockpit, which makes it hard to pick players off the back of them, and the fiery rocks and damage of the magmasaur is brutal when it comes to a rhino. Once deceased, you can harvest rhinoognatha for its resin, meat, and chitin. Rhinoognatha's lower body glows an amber yellow, perhaps to attract prey much like an anglerfish would use their dangler to bring in small fish. 
This yellow part of their body produces rhinogatha resin and acts like a light source as long as the rhino has charge. This charge replaces their oxygen stat as rhinos don't need and don't require oxygen to breathe. Still much to be discovered about this statistic though. Its resin can be harvested and used as a substitute for sap, honey or ambergris. The resin doesn't stack because of its stickiness, but it also doesn't decay. This creature is rather biodiverse. It likes living in the deep oceans, caves, and it can also be found flying in the skies, much like a quetzal. It is found to be more of a solitary creature though. If you want to tame a rhino, you have to approach it much like how you would approach a reaper tame, but it has a lot of extra steps. First, you need to seek and kill a male rhino. This will drop rhino essence, which is much like a pheromone. Next, you need to locate a female rhino and prepare an offering. You do this by either consuming the essence yourself or feeding it to a creature. Bear in mind what the offering is affects the outcome of the Rhino's offspring. Creature types such as Tusio, Spino, Rexes, and players over level 100 provide 100% efficiency to the offspring. Whilst Allosaurus's only give 50% efficiency, Raptors only give 20%, and lower level humans only give 5%. Rhinos will not accept tech or mech creatures, they must be able to carry the creature or person to impregnate them. Once you've picked your offering and then fed them the Rhino essence, start to damage the female Rhino. Apparently, she finds a sexy and intense one in the bedroom. You get what I mean. <laughs> Either way, you need to get below 10% of her HP if you want them to impregnate the offering. Be careful if you are not the one getting impregnated because she can easily peel you off the back of your tame, so you might want to devise a trap or use a creature which she cannot pick you off of. Whilst you and your tame are pregnant, it is going to slowly grow and eat whatever is alive as it grows and then it will pop out and you can claim it much like a reaper would do and uh, you'll have your very own rhino. Once tamed you can also be impregnated by domesticated rhinos which is certainly different. Put them on mating and grab an offering, tame or person was flying or swimming and you can freely pregnant them. This creature or person will then become the next host for the baby. The host must be equal or higher in level than the female for it to work, and the female needs to be in range of a male rhino on mating for encouragement. You can also saddle up these creatures, and it's quite similar. They're saddled to a chopper motorcycle, which is really awesome. The smoke that comes out of them keeps the insect calm, much like how the beekeepers calm their bees by using smoke when they're collecting honey from a beehive. Either way, I think you'll find these creatures very worthwhile having around the base once domesticated. They are said to be released late 2023, so please bear in mind when it comes to these creatures and all of that, some of these features might not be added in when it comes to the finished product. As this has happened before in previous creature submissions, they don't add everything depending on what is balanced and stuff. They will add whatever they see fit into adding it. And perhaps we could also have additional abilities that are not mentioned here. So it depends what wildcard want to do and what they can balance it around. And it also depends on what biome they're also sticking it in. So uh, they'll see which one they prefer and then pop it in the game and happy days. But anyways, I hope you found this video helpful and informative about this new creature. Let me know what you think. Do you think it's overpowered? Do you like the idea of something like this in the game? Which map would you prefer to see this one on? By the sounds of it, it definitely sounds like it has to be on a map with quite a body of water if it wants to work efficiently. At first when I read the description of this thing and I didn't really read much into it, I was thinking, oh, this thing looks like it's perfect for Scorched Earth. But then reading further into it and it actually mimicking a Tuso and everything like that, it definitely feels like something that needs to be in a water map. Perhaps actually Lost Island might be actually really good for this creature as that has quite a body of water in it. And probably could do with some more water life in there as well. But let me know what you think. But thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful or interesting, please consider giving it a like or subscribing if you're feeling generous. <laughs> It's very helpful towards the channel and it helps me grow as a creator further or and uh, it shows YouTube that it's like, yeah, you're a good channel, you know, <laughs> so it's helpful that for that for a creator, etc. Anyway, thank you for watching. I love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.